previously on the reissued Goodwill Challenge. I shopped for one head-to-toe look and ended up leaving Goodwill with two more looks in the making. This is their story. When I saw that there were so many of these identical mesh jerseys, I just knew that I had to make something with them. I love a mesh moment, and it's rare to find duplicates like this at Goodwill, so I had to take advantage. I'm really enjoying a matching top and bottom set lately, so I thought it would be cool to keep one tank intact, modify its design a little bit, and then make a pair of matching shorts. After some ripping and cutting, I modified my design a little bit. I would do a seam down the front to utilize two different silkscreen sections and create a pair of boxing type shorts that mirrored the symmetry of the top. I start by painstakingly pinning two of the jersey fronts together so that the logos are lined up directly on top of each other to ensure symmetry. Then I draw a straight line down the front that will be my seam line. Once I sew along that line, I end up with a full front panel. Back on the main jersey that will serve as the base for my tank, I measure two inches on either side of the side seam and cut just the black layers along that line to reveal the white underneath. Then I marked the center and drew a curved shape along one side of the chest. Once I cut along that side, I pinned it across to the other side to mark and cut that side to match. The construction and silk screening on these jerseys were not always super symmetrical to begin with, so I did my best to get symmetry however I could. I used the piece I cut off as a template to cut a matching curve in the new front panel that I had created, and then pinned those curves right sides together to insert the panel. For all of my seams on this look, I started with a simple straight stitch and then switched over to a zigzag stitch to kind of give the effect of a serger. I then cut away any excess seam allowance to give a clean edge. For the shorts pattern, I traced these Muay Thai boxing shorts that had the look and fit that I was going for. The front and back pieces were very similar in the pattern, but slightly different, so I traced them separately onto a brown paper takeout bag. I never throw anything away. I traced the front piece onto the front of one of my untouched jerseys, making sure that it was placed so that I was able to mirror the placement on the other jersey. After cutting one out, I lined up the silk screen parts again to place and cut the other piece. The backs were much easier to cut since they didn't have any logos on them, so I could kind of place it wherever. I pinned the center seams right sides together and sewed. Then I did the same for the crotch seam. Now I was able to pin together the sides and try them on. They were tighter in the leg than I had wanted, so I added a little extra room on the sides when I cut out the white under leg. I probably added a little bit more than I needed, which created a bit of an issue later. Ooh, you'll see what happens. For the underlay, I wanted to match the top that had the exposed white on the sides and the existing inside-out side seams. So I used the existing side seams here as well and placed my front and back patterns along it to create a single piece. Once again, I sewed up the center seams and the crotch seam. Now I can layer up the pieces to see how things are looking. To resolve the raw edges on all of the black pieces and the white pieces later on, I seam ripped the bias tape off the head and armholes of all of the jerseys. That way I could reattach it to bind all my new edges. This whole process took forever. This fabric is super slippery and attaching the binding was tricky. 
Plus toward the end, I started running out of long pieces. So I had to work with all of these little pieces and patch them together. So annoying. I also needed to cut down some of the sides on the top and the shorts to create an even white stripe all around. But that was pretty simple. I was thinking when I purchased this camo vest that I could use the elastic in the bottom for my shorts. However, there actually was no elastic, just gathered fabric. So I went with that, detaching the gathered waistband and building my new waistband around it. I cut long strips in white and black a little wider than my waistband to create loops that were the same circumference as my shorts. After a little figuring, I sewed right side to wrong side so that the waistband could be right side out when rolling down over the shorts. I put my vest waistband inside and then stretched it tight while pinning all around the top of the mesh waistband. I stitched this in place, stretching the whole thing as I went. That way when I unstretched it, the fabric would be gathered up. I repeated this process for the bottom, tucking the raw edges under as I went. After running several lines of stitches around, stretching it every time like this to create the effect that my model shorts had, the shorts started to fit a little bit too loosely as the fabric was starting to get stretched out. Ugh. One step forward, two steps back. Improvising a little bit here, I whipped up a drawstring with some grosgrain ribbon that I stitched in half and fed through one of the channels on the waistband. That'll work okay. At least they won't be falling down. I finished both the top and the shorts by cutting any uneven bottoms and sewing bias tape around everything. For the final look, I was racking my brain for the perfect way to use two pairs of almost duplicate jeans to make a matching top and bottom set. Then, inspiration struck when I came across the new McQueen collection on Instagram. I love how the denim ties the top and the bottom together, but the suit jacket that I had bought in my haul was not really the right color and it already had white stripes on it. So I headed back to Goodwill to source a new suit. Is this cheating? I don't know, I'm making my own rules, right? I found this great charcoal pinstripe suit for $15, so I was still well within my $100 budget for all three looks. Plus I have the pants to do something with later. One pair of the jeans were already a really good fit, so they just needed hemming. I marked the new length, cut them off, and then turned them under twice to finish them off. The hems that I had cut off were perfect for the new jacket cuffs. I started by detaching the liner to allow me to shorten the existing cuffs. If I hadn't shortened them, the whole thing would have been a little bit too long. I turned them under as much as I could and detached the lowest button so that it would be out of the way. Then I cut off the excess and lined up my denim so that the seams on both the pinstripe and the denim matched. I pinned everything in place to check the length. It was a bit longer than I needed, so I cut the denim shorter and then pinned it back in all the way around the cuff, right sides together. The excess denim was pinned together and then sewn to close the loop. Finally, I stitched all the way around with the cuff to attach everything. I finished re-sewing the denim hem and then pressed everything, of course. I was working to the very last minute on this one, so some things didn't get finished fully, but eventually I will hand stitch the liner and the missing button back in place. For my version of the McQueen jacket, my idea was to sew the waistband of the jeans right along the line of the lower jacket button so that the jeans button took the place of the original lower button. So I cut just below that spot to give a little seam allowance. I traced with chalk first and then cut just the outer shell leaving the liner intact. I had already ripped the seams where the liner attached to the outer shell at the bottom, so after I cut, it came off cleanly. I ripped open all of the seams in the legs of the second pair of jeans so that they were able to lay flat. I also cut the back center of the waistband apart to have two pieces. I placed the pieces I had cut off the suit jacket over the jeans as a template for the shape of the bottom. I ended up opening up the seam allowance and tracing along that to get the right seam allowance here as well. These jeans had a pleat in front, so I ironed it very cleanly and sewed along it to ensure it would lay flat. The extra fabric in the pleat wouldn't have worked here. 
This whole thing would have been so much easier if I had been able to get a pair of jeans that was quite a bit larger. However, in this case, I had to create new panels from the legs of the jeans to have enough fabric in the back. I wanted to keep the single vent in the back so that the lining could still work, so I made two new panels that would overlap slightly in the center back. Before sewing anything, I pinned everything in place and tried it on the jacket to be sure it would work. Looks okay. After top stitching my panels on, I cut away the excess fabric underneath. This whole process felt a little bit like the denim apron I made. Weird deja vu. With my iron still hot, I went along the bottom edge and pressed under my edges to create the hem. I had to readjust this length a little bit later after securing the liner, but it was nice to have a guideline. Now for the kicker. I opted to hand stitch everything moving forward since it would be tough to keep everything lined up and laying right through the machine. Plus, it would be nearly impossible not to sew through the liner, and I had already been so careful to make the liner perfect here, so here we go. I started by sewing along the waistband from front to back on each side, constantly checking to make sure everything was lining up. Then I used a ladder stitch to turn under the denim and stitch it to the liner, again starting at the front and working toward the back. The liner was being super difficult and I was running out of time, but I managed to get it stretched out just right and to manipulate the fabric to get it pinned in place. I actually sewed these last few seams in the car on the way to the shoot. Woo, crazy. I'm super excited to be collaborating with Goodwill on their Create campaign, and I hope you guys will head over to their channel to check out the commercial and the new content that we create together over the next couple of months. And now check out the finished looks.